This is Blanche SB. This video I'm going to be covering getting started with Serpens 3. Let's jump right in. Now if you didn't catch my last video, I'll quickly cover installing Serpens. After you've downloaded the zip file, go to your edit preferences. I'm using Blender 3.1.2. Click on install. Go find your Serpens copy and install. Enable the add-on. You're good to go. So if you don't have a workspace already set up, you can go ahead and set one up by clicking on your workspaces option and you're going to scroll down and select visual scripting. Now I've already got one set up so I'm going to go ahead and go over here and take a look at mine. Now I'm going to start from scratch and I'm going to enable screencast keys that way you can see my mouse. Now at the top header we have the node graph selection and if you have an add-on it will be listed here along with all of the other node graphs that are available for that add-on. In Serpents 3, there's only one add-on that you can work on at a time, but you can make the add-on using multiple node graphs. You can go ahead and click on New, and that will activate the Serpents header. There is an option to start the tutorial, and you can work through with a tutorial node. It'll show up. If you don't see it, just hit period on your keyboard, and it will zoom right in. It's the numpad period. Click on next to scroll through the tutorial. I'm going to click on stop. There's also the blend data browser, and we're going to be covering this extensively in another video, but this is how you get access to all the properties that exist already in Blender. Click on exit. You have access to the console. So as I click that, you can see my system console, and I can clear it as well. Toggle it back up. This is really helpful for debugging. This is the Python tooltips. You can enable this in edit preferences, but you can also have quick access to turn it on and off. That way, when you highlight your mouse over something, you can get the Python behind what you're looking at. This helps as you're building your add-on just to get reference where things live and what properties are tied to what. There's a settings menu, and inside currently we have the insert socket buttons, and this is on nodes that allow you to insert more than one socket, like a row node. So if you have multiple sockets, you can click on these up buttons, and it inserts one in between the two. Turn that off you won't have that option. This is where you access your node trees. When you create a new add-on in the Serpent's end panel, you'll have access to the node trees in the add-on. You also have snapping, so when you add in a node, turn snapping on and you'll snap to the grid. These are standard node editor overlays, and you also have your compiling options. So shortcut key shift R does compile to force it, and this might be slow for really large add-ons and node graphs. This forces a complete recompile of everything in Serpent's. You don't need to do this anymore. With Serpents 3, as I start adding things in, you'll notice that it automatically compiles. When I connect this label to this panel, you automatically see the label show up because the compiling is happening in real time. You can also unregister the add-on, and it forces everything to turn back off. Now to re-register your add-on, you just compile again or hit Shift R. There's a Discord website button that you can click on that'll take you to the Discord invite link, and you can join the Serpents community on Discord. This is specifically for users to sit and connect with each other. This is more for us to be able to hang out and talk about our add-ons. If there are bugs that need to be reported, there is a bug reporting section on the Discord though. And there's access to the documentation. So when you click on this button, you'll be taken to the Notion webpage where you have access to all the Serpent's documentation and to help you get started. Now in the Serpent's end panel, you have a variable section. This is where you would create variables for your add-on. You also have a property section. This is where you'll be creating properties and we call these Serpent's properties. Um, you can attach them to various things in Blender, but because you're creating them, we differentiate these from the standard properties that already exist in Blender, such as these properties over here. You have an asset section. This is where you would load in assets, such as images, blend files, other things that you need access to. And this will keep track of the path to the asset. Even when you export your add-on, it will auto-maintain the path to that asset, and the asset will export with the add-on. The add-on section is where you name your add-on. So in this case, my add-on could be named test, and I would give myself my author name. Pick the category where the add-on is being used in, and you can give it a description and fill all these other sections out. You can also set the version control along with the minimum Blender version. So if I have a panel, I'm ready to save it. I can click on save and export my add-on, and it takes the version already into account for you. Once the add-on is exported, I can uncompile. I can go to my edit preferences install my exported add-on, if I enable it, you'll notice ready to go. You also have an extension section, and this is where packages and snippets are stored. We'll cover those more in detail at a later time. You also have a settings section, and this is really helpful. So you can turn off compile on load, 
if you want to open Blender without compiling, um, let's say you have a, a node graph you're still working on and there's issues with it, you can turn off compile and load. The debugging section is really helpful. So when I have a node here, if I turn on debug nodes, it shows everything related to this panel as compiled code. Now, if you don't want to see it here, you can click on keep code. And when I go to my scripting workspace, clear this out, I've now got a Serpens code log. And this is the compiled code during the development part of Serpens. Not everything in here is going to be one for one when the add-on is exported, but most of it will be. And as you can tell, we're starting at line one all the way down to line 119. That's the whole add-on. And this is a lot shorter than Serpens V2. You also have debug sockets, and this tells you information about your sockets as you connect them. So as I pull this out, you can see the Python code related to plugging this node in. And as they connect, they update. You can debug your properties. So the debug properties shows you the registration and unregistration for your properties as you're creating them in the Serpens end panel. I right, talked about keep code, debug compile time. So this will show you every time you're debugging um, how long your add-on takes to compile. And in the top right, you can see the compile time as you're adding nodes in your graph. This is the full compile time as you're working. And that, I mean, that's in milliseconds, so we're, we're really fast. And we've made, we made really big graphs, and we haven't gotten up to one second on most of the stuff we've been testing. Um, as you start getting a little more intensive with computations, this can go up. Now, inside of settings, you also have EasyBPY, and this is from Curtis Holt. And there's a documentation to get started with EasyBPY. Once you have EasyBPY installed into Blender, the way that Curtis Holt wants you to install it, it's automatically integrated inside, and it, Serpens will know whether or not it's, it's been installed. And if you get this checkbox, you can start scripting using the EasyBPY code. You just make a new script and start coding along with the EasyBPY architecture. And that's all I'm gonna cover in this video. I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, we'll catch you on the next video where I cover the various data types associated with scripting and making use of the data types inside of Serpents. Catch you in the next one.